Hello everyone. Today's our topic is 13th lesson in our part 2 that is National Liberation Movements in the Colonies. National Liberation Movements in the Colonies. Once if we observe the title of the lesson, it is clearly showing that liberation movements. Liberation movements means like freedom movements. Freedom movements in the colonies. Colonies means the countries which are under the control of other countries. Example, India. India was colony of Britain those times. Okay, so in this session, uh, in this lesson, we, we have to discuss, we are going to discuss about three countries. First of all, China. Okay, China. China after Vietnam. Vietnam after the third country, Nigeria. So let us, let us take example, what is China's condition those times? How China was there? Why liberation movements were started in China? Right. China. India was under the control of only one country, Britain. Britain ruled India. But China was, China was under the control of many countries. Example, this part of the China under the control of France. This, this part of the China was under the control of British. This is France. This is, this is British. This is Italy. And this is, this is Germany. This is Austria. This is Hungary and other parts, US, Japan. So what we are observing, many countries, they are ruling China or many countries, they established their powers in China. Okay. So many countries are established their spheres of influence in China. So that is China system. So Chinese have to fight with along this, these all countries. They have to fight with Italy. They have to fight with Britain. They have to fight with France. They have to fight, fight with Germany, Austria, Hungary, Japan, US. So China's situation is very different while compared to India. Let us see how they were liberated. Let us see how they were liberated. Yeah. Initially, China was ruled by. Initially, China was under the control till the 20th century. Till the 20th century, China was ruled by Manchu dynasty ruler. Manchu dynasty. Manchu dynasty. Manchu dynasty's people, rulers were ruled in China till 1911 they ruled. Till 1911 they were ruled. So these Manchu dynasty members were failed to stop the foreigners into China. So because of the failure of Manchu dynasty rulers only, these all the foreigners were infiltrated into China. Many members they entered into China. So that's what Chinese government failed. They are failed to restrict. They are failed to restrict foreigners. Isn't it? Yeah. They are they are failed to restrict the foreigners. Next. They have given a lot of exemptions. They have given a lot of exemptions to the foreigners. What are the exemptions? They gave that low import duties, low import duties, low taxes, low taxes, military forces. Military forces and also they gave immunity from Chinese law. Immunity from Chinese law. Yeah. So Manchu dynasty have failed to stop the foreigners to do not enter into China. But whenever they failed, they also gave certain concessions, certain benefits to the foreigners. What are the benefits? Low import duties. Those foreign countries, they did not pay many taxes. That means say low import duties, low import taxes, military forces. Foreigners, they brought military forces. That military forces also allowed. Next, immunity from Chinese law. Chinese laws were not working for them. Chinese laws were not valid to them. So these kind of the facilities were provided by the Manchu dynasty. Then the common people, administrators were hating this Manchu dynasty ruler. These members completely, they are, they lost their support. These Manchu dynasty were lost their support, people support and administrators also, they, are, they not gave support to the Manchu dynasty. Finally, this Manchu dynasty, all members, they wanted to drive out this Manchu dynasty from China. They wanted to cancel the dynasty, Manchu dynasty from China because of this, these conditions. They may ask that, why Manchu dynasty lost its majority? 
why people are people are unwilling to give support to the Manchu dynasty because they did not stop the foreigners to enter into China. Now let us see how these Man Chinese government or Chinese they overthrew this Manchu. 1911, 1911 Manchu dynasty was abolished. Manchu dynasty was abolished in 1911. 1911 Chinese Manchu dynasty was abolished. Many people they came together and they were abolished. This was uh, abolition was done. Yeah, it was the abolition was done by a person. His name is Sun Yat-sen. Sun Yat-sen. Yeah, Sun Yat-sen. Sun Yat-sen timing duration is 1866 to 1925. His lifespan. Sun Yat-sen. Sun Yat-sen he was overthrown or abolished. Abolished this monarchy or Manchu dynasty and he established a republic. Sun Yat-sen. 1911. 1911 republic was established. Republic. A republic was established under the control of Sun Yat-sen. Sir, who was Sun Yat-sen? Sun Yat-sen was a, we can, he can consider as founder of modern China. He was considered as founder of modern China. He considered as founder of modern China. He was introduced democracy and Christianity. He was introduced to democracy and Christianity Christianity introduced by introduced by introduced by Sun Yat-sen. I repeat democracy and Christianity introduced. He was studied his medicine. He also completed his medicine. Okay. Completed his medicine. Yeah. When he was completed his medicine, but he is worrying a lot about the Chinese Chinese situation. The Chinese situation was very bad. Machu dynasty were not controlling to them. Hence, you know, he is completely, he is completely very bad situation to that to control. Next, to adopt, to adopt certain development in modern China, he introduced uh, three principles. I am writing here three principles. Three principles. Yeah, three principles. Three principles of Sagat Sir. What are these three principles? Three principles were. Sun Min Chui, you can call as Sun Min Chui. Yeah, so what is Sun Min Chui? First one, first one, nationalism. Nationalism, democracy, democracy. Third one, socialism. Yeah, three principles of selection. Three principles of selection. These are Sun Min Chui means in Chinese language these are called as Sun Min Chui means nationalism. He wanted to develop the nationalism. He wanted to drive out the farmers. He wanted to remove the farmers. That he called uh, for he wanted they wanted to remove the farmers. That is nationalism and uh, democracy. He wanted to he wanted to establish democracy. That means people elected government. People elected government. And he wanted to, he wanted to adopt socialism. What is the meaning of the socialism? Socialism means you know industries, factories, and lands. I repeat, industries, factories, lands were confined to the government. So he wanted to remove the farmers under nationalism. He wanted to establish democracy, and he wanted to implement the socialism. Socialism means you know land redistribution. The people of China they don't have lands. So those who are having more lands, you know, they wanted to take the lands and he wanted to give distribute to the landless poor people. Factories. Factories they also wanted to conquer. He wanted to nationalize the factories and he wanted to nationalize the banks. These all are comes under socialism. So these all are these all are the principles and about the little bit facts, the facts related information related to Sun itself. But unfortunately, Sun Yat-sen did not come in power. He was fought, he was overthrown. But Sun Yat-sen did not come into power. Finally, finally, China was went to the hands of the warlords. China was. China was came under the control of warlords. Who are warlords? Warlords are in each and every state, 
certain warlords are there. They have certain military group. So they are independently ruling Chinese states. They are independently ruling Chinese state. The Republic was established, but Sun Yat-sen unable to come into power. The power was transferred. The power was grabbed by the warlords. Warlords means you know. The, uh, some of the persons, those who are having military or heads and very rich elites of the Chinese were called as warlords. Yeah. This is about the information related to Sun Yat-sen. Then let us see, after Sun Yat-sen who came? After the Sun Yat-sen. Yeah, after the death of Sun Yat-sen. After the death of China, Sun Yat-sen, KMP. KMD leader, KMD, Chinese party name or Sun Yat-sen party name is KMT. KMT also called as Guo Mingdong Party. Guo Mingdong, Mingdong Party. Guo Mingdong Party. This part, party also called as National People's Party. National People's Republic Party also it can be called as. This party also called as Guo Mingdong Party, KMT Party, which was set up by Sun Yat-sen. It was set up by Mr. Sun Yat-sen. Yeah. So whenever Sun Yat-sen was established this party, this party after the death of Sun Yat-sen, after the death of Sun Yat-sen, Chiang Kai-shek, Chiang Kai-shek, Chiang Kai-shek became a leader of KMT party. So they may ask you that who is the leader of Sun Yat-sen party or who is the leader of KMT party or Guo Mingdong party is we can call as Chiang Kai-shek. You remember Chiang Kai-shek. Now we, we, we will have a little bit discussion related to uh, KMT party in the remaining sessions or upcoming sessions. Yeah. Next let us see May 4th movement. May 4th movement. Historically it has very great significance. It has very great significance. May 4th movement. So what happened on May 4th moment? Okay? On, on 4th May, on 4th May 1919, it's very very important. First point, May 4th moment started on May 4th 1919. At where? At BG. At BG. You know that Beijing, Beijing is you know capital city. Beijing. Beijing is the capital city of China. So why, why, why it was started? The yeah, reason, the yeah, reason is China did not get back its territories from Japan. I am writing here, China did not get back its territories, its territories from Japan as per the terms and conditions of treaty of sales. Yeah. Why? Why May 4th movement was started? Simple reason. China did not get back its territories from Japan as per the terms and conditions. Terms and conditions of Treaty of Versailles. Sir, why Treaty of Versailles came here again? Because China was an ally. I am writing a point. China was an ally of Britain. Britain in World War I. Right. China was an ally. China was gave its support to Britain. So they won. They won in Britain won means China or Chinese they won. So whenever they won, during World War, Japan has occupied certain areas of China. Japan occupied certain parts of China so that as per the Treaty of Versailles, or as per the Treaty of Versailles, as per the Treaty of Versailles. China have to give back the territories to the, sorry, Japan have to give back the territories to the China. But China did not get its territories till 1919. 1919, no need it was had, it was concluded. But you know, they did not give the territories to China. Japan did not hand over the Chinese territories to China. Hence, you know, many members they came onto the road. Many members they came onto the road, they are giving slogans. They are giving slogans. Second, though all the village, all the people from villages 
and all the persons, different different ages, they came onto the road and they are demanding that to attack old tradition. They are demanding that to attack old tradition. To attack old tradition. I mean Chinese, you know, they wanted to develop China into modern nation. So that the old tradition, they wanted to remove the old tradition. I repeat, they wanted to remove the old tradition. And they also are giving the slogans that save China. Save China through modern science, democracy, modern science, modern science, democracy, and uh, nationalism. So they want they want they wanted to bring changes in modern science, democracy, and nationalism. Save China through medicine. Medicine science, democracy and nationalism. So that also they are giving complete slogans, slogans on the roads of the Beijing. And also they are demanding that drive out the farmers. Drive out foreigners. As we know that China was under the control of many countries. Many countries were ruling. So they are demanding that we have to drive out all the foreigners. We have to remove the, all the foreigners. Next. They also are demanding that Control over resources. Yeah, control over resources. Before that, there was a resources which was under the control of under the control of British or those countries are ruling China. Those countries are ruling China, they are controlling the resources. Next, they are also saying that remove the inequalities. Remove the, remove the inequalities. There was a lot of inequalities between the people. Lot of inequalities. There are a lot of inequalities among the people, uh, like you know, poverty. Okay? Yeah, and uh, I want to write again some other points. Okay? Seventh one, remove poverty. Remove poverty. Majority of the people were, majority of the people in China were poor people. Mostly they depends upon agriculture and this giving slogan that remove poverty. Next. And they also certain other certain others terms and other conditions are there. They are demanding for simple language script. Simple language and a script. Simple language and script. So Chinese language was little bit very difficult. So that they want little bit changes in the Chinese language also. They are asking for the change. Next step. Abolition. Abolition of abolition of certain uh, subordinate of women, or we can say that uh, abolishing uh, yeah, abolishing of polygamy. Polygamy means I think you know that there was uh, for many wives, the person having many wives, uh, there are subordinate of this is called as subordination of women. Abolishing abolishing of subordinating of women. Subordination, subordination of women. So women they don't have any rights and women were completely degraded in China. So that's why they are asking that abolishing of subordination of women. Subordination of women means one person having many wives. One person having many wives. Next step. The important one is food binding. Food binding. Food binding. Food binding is a cruel practice. Food burning, it was followed in Chinese community, it was a superstition. It was a superstition. The Chinese, the Chinese they tie, they tie with the ropes the food, the food will be tied with the ropes that which could not allow the grow of the feet. They believe that long feet women cannot can be cannot be married. So it, it is a very bad sin. It is not good. So that food binding was practiced. Food binding. Food binding means it was a cruel method to do not allow the women's feet to do not grow. So that's what you know, that way uh, tie with the ropes. So this food binding, against of these all, against of these all they are, they are doing food binding and the illegal marriages, mostly uh, uh, illegal marriages were happening. So they are also demanding that equality in marriages, equality in marriages, equality in marriages. There was no equality in the marriages. Women does not have choice. Women does not have choice. 
and there was a contract marriages were there in China and twelfth one is economic development twelfth one is economic development so these are the reasons for the May 4th movement these are the reasons for the May 4th movement I want to repeat May 4th movement it was held on 4th May 1919 in Beijing because the main reason is China did not get back its territories from Japan because China was an ally of Britain in World War One. In World War One, China, Britain both are fought. China won, Britain won. Whenever they won, they have to get back certain territories from Japan. But Japan is delaying to give the territories, so that this movement was came. And other, that is the main reason. And other reasons also there. First one, to attack old tradition, save China, save China through modern science, democracy, and nationalism. Drive out the foreigners. They wanted to send the foreigners out. Control over resources. Remove the inequalities. Remove poverty. Simple language script. Simple language and script. Abolishing of subordination of women. Food binding. Equality in marriages. Economic development. These are their demand. These are their demands. Okay, hope I clear. Next, let us see about Kuomintang Party or KMP Party. Yeah, as you learned that KMP party leader, this KMP party also called as Guo Mindang. Guo Mindang. So this Guo Mindang party leader, after the death of, after the death of Sanit Sen, Chiang Kai-shek. Chiang Kai-shek, very very important. Chiang Kai-shek, he became, uh, he became leader of uh, Guo Mindang party. Yeah, there was another party also there. There was another party also there, CCP. There are two parties are there, CCP party and the KMT party, both parties are there. These both parties were tried to unite the country. Tried to unite the country. Yeah, these both parties were tried to unite the country and these parties were, they have ideological differences. Like Congress party, BJP party, they have, they want all national interest, but their methodology is different. Chiang oh. Chiang Kai-shek introduced Chiang was introduced four great needs Chiang introduced four great needs So what are these four great needs? I am writing here Four great needs Four great needs He thought that we have to provide four great needs to each and everyone First one is food Clothing Food Cloth Third one is shelter Fourth one is transportation. Fourth one is transportation. Yeah. So this is the four important needs he believes. Chiang Kai Shek he usually believes uh, in it. And Chiang Kai Shek was a leader that you know he was launched military campaign on the warlords. And I said to you, I told to you that China was under the control of military uh, under the control of warlords. He was military campaign. Military campaign on warlords. He started. He started military campaign. He started military campaign on the warlords, and he also gave that people to that habit and instinct for unified behavior. He also said that habit, habit. He told the people to change. He usually focusing the people or encouraging the people to that. Change their attitude, habit, and instinct. Instinct for unified behavior. Very, very important. It may be asked in it may be asked in examinations. Habit and instinct for the instinct for unified behavior. He told that we all have to be change our attitude as per the situation. We have to change. He was told. Chiang Kai Shek. So mostly this KMT party was in urban areas. KMT party, KMT party mostly in urban base, urban areas. In villages, villages, these party members, this party is not strong in grassroots level. KMT party was very weak in grassroots level. Grassroots level means in village level, this party was very weak. Okay? Yeah. So that if their KMT party members, they focus mostly on the urban rulers. Especially the workers. 
especially in the workers their main focus main focus was on the workers on the time there was 5 lakhs industrial there was a slow industrialization in 19 1990 industrialization was bit of slow there are 5 lakhs people were working in shanghai 5 lakhs people were working in shanghai and mostly the women's workers also working in shanghai women's salaries were very low women's workers uh, women's workers are working in the factories women's salaries were very low and women's working conditions are very harsh very bad working conditions are there for the women's women's they are organized trade unions women's organized trade unions trade unions women's were organized trade unions they are inspired by the european ideology they are inspired by the european ideology like women's they are thinking that we want the freedom okay we want the women rights we want the women rights we want the freedom we want trade unions we want the good working conditions and we want voting rights so that the women are demanding so the women are demanding so i repeat that kmt party was mostly in urban located in urban areas they are more focus on the urban areas even though they are not focused mostly on urban areas okay 5 lakhs people are working in in, in uh, shanghai majority people were women women they do not have proper salaries very bad working conditions are there low wages are there women demanding for the freedom women demanding for the better working conditions women were demanding for the women's rights and women were associated women were forming trade unions so these all are there okay yeah this mostly european ideas were developed in china among the women also because this also one of the responsible for for this responsible is schools and colleges schools and colleges schools and colleges were set up in all throughout the china then you know majority people were receiving education and they are demanding the european ideas equality fraternity liberty independence democracy so they are they started demands example you know 1902 1902 peking university peking university peking university was set up peking university also played a very crucial role among the education sector in china education sector in china schools and universities and journalist journalism journalism also mostly focused due to the journalism also people's their thought their change their change came among the people's ideology and let us see how this kmt party fall down this is a kmt party attitude then now let us discuss how this kmt party fall down kmt party initial days it was very good when sanesan was founder sanesan was the founder he also founder of modern china yeah chia kashi yeah chia kashi was conservative i think he was conservative you know that meaning of the conservative conservative means he who usually likes the old tradition he was he was a conservative he was a conservative conservative means he wanted the old tradition and he also told he also told that he also said many times that women need to be confined women confined confined to home he told that women need not do any work women have to do only the house household work women that did need not doing any need not need, need not did anything women just they have to serve their uh, husband and children that's it and he also said he also uh, introduced he also introduced uh, uh, certain things that you know uh, four virtues four virtues we call that is four virtues what are these four virtues first one is appearance first one is appearance women appearance need to be very good very gentle okay appearance second one is chastity 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 means women need to be very pure women need to be very pure third one speech speech and fourth one is work so women have to do work in house women have to speech very polite and women have to follow chastity Ch chastity means very pure no illegal relationship and their appearance also what they go very traditional 
very traditions. So these are called as four virtues, four virtues which was introduced by Chiang Kai She. And he also told that women have to be cover their bodies from the neck to women have to be cover their bodies from the neck to toe. Neck, neck. These are called as henny lines. He introduced one frock. It is called as henny line. He introduced one frock. He introduced one frock. So this frock is called as this frock is called as henny line. Henny line, you know, it, it is covered complete body from the neck to toe. The body will be covered. So that majority people they lost in interest on the KMT party. Majority people they know that this this member was this person was not good and his ideology also not good at all for the China. And most probably what the people feel that now the sun eats an aim is sun eats an aim. What is sun eats an aim? Sun eats an main aim is that his plan. Sun eats an plan. Sun eats an vision is you know try to. Uh, Try to build nationalism. Try to build nationalism and completely abolish the so abolish the capitalism. Plan the Sanets and plans were ignored. Sanets said that he gave most of the importance to the visions. Sanets and plans were ignored. Sanets and visions also ignored. Sanets and main policy is you know build nationalism or suppress capitalism. So that was ignored by ignored by. This KMT party, then ultimately this KMT party, KMT party was lost interest. And one more reason for that, he imposed, he tried to ban the trade unions. He tried to impose military on the poor people also, on the people. He tried to build a military rule and he tried to suppress the movement against him. He was tried to suppress the women trade unions also. Women trade unions also he wanted to suppress, suppress. Hence. Chiang Kai Shek was lost his majority, and many of the people were many of the people were not interested to join in this KMT party. So this is about rise and downfall of KMT party. Next, now let us see Chinese situation. Japan, Japan, Japan occupied China in 1937. I repeat. Japan occupied some part of some parts of China were occupied by Japan uh, in 1937, and due to this, due to this, lot of drastic changes came. So China became very weak. China became very weak. China became very weak. Thirty percent of prices were prices 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 increased. All the cost cost was increased. During that time, lot of the people were suffering. So those time, the rural people are suffering. Rural China, rural China usually suffering with the mainly two problems. One is ecological problem. One is ecological like disturbances, ecological disturbances. Ecological with soil exhaustion, soil exhaustion. Ecological, ecological and uh, ecological with soil exhaustion. And uh, and uh, deforestation, deforest area here. These are the big one. Deforestation, deforestation and floods. Usually floods also get. Last one is flood. This is complete one part. So rural China facing two problems at the time: ecological with soil exhaustion, ecological with uh, ecological with soil exhaustion one problem. Deforestation and floods. Deforestation floods is one problem. And another problem is. Rural indebtedness. Poor people were indebtedness. Rural people were indebtedness. Indebtedness. Indebtedness means they are unable to pay. They are unable to pay the amount or money to the landlords due to the landlords. And primitive technology. Primitive technology. Poor communications. Last and final one is poor communications. Pure communication were there in China. So these are the China rural China problem. These all are the rural China problem. Rural indebtedness. Rural people were indebtedness. They are completely in the debt trap. And primitive technology. There was no proper technology. And poor poor communication. There was no good communications in China. So this is during the 1937 when Japan occupied China at that time. 
China became very weak. Thirty percent of prices were rose, and ecological balance, ecological these all are the problematic during at the time. During at the time, you know, a person was found C C P party was found. Formed in 1921, CCP means Chinese Communist Party. Communist Chinese Communist Party was founded in 1921, 1921 by Mao Zedong. Very very important. Mao Zedong. CCP Party was founded by Mao Zedong with the help of help of Soviet support. With the help of Soviet support. Yeah, Lenin was establishing one commander. Yeah, so what is commander? Commander, it was an international organization. Commander, it was an international organization. If any country they wanted to, any any country they wanted to establish, they wanted to set up communist kind of government. This commander will support. This commander will support. Example, India. Indians wanted to establish. Communist government, so they will give their support to us. Okay, and this woman turn helped many of the countries. And uh, these also follow. They also followed. They also followed Marxism, Marxist ideologies, Marxist ideology. You might have aware that Karl Marx. They have they followed Karl Marx ideology. So Marxist ideology, the woman turn also called as communism. Uh, CCP party was founded in 1921, 21 because of the Russian Revolution. It was founded due to the impact of Russian Revolution. Russian Revolution. In our previous lesson, we learned that in Russia, revolution broke in 1917. Then after communist government was set up in Russia. Then Chinese also inspired from the Russian Revolution. They set up communist party of China or or Chinese communist party. So this was set up in 1921. By Mao Zedong and the uh, government was gave some huge support to this. So this is our session today. And next session we will see about CCC Party's action plan. Thank you very much.